Welcome to the Jazz Bar. The Roma have an exotic image. Musicians, actors, artists, sometimes beggars. Europeans called them gypsies because they thought they came from Egypt. But Romani people have lived in Europe for over a thousand years. In first world countries, most live in third world conditions, on the edges of mainstream society. 2005 marks the start of the decade of Roma inclusion. But will the eight Central and Eastern European countries, where most Roma live, help them break out of poverty and exclusion? This is Facultetta, on the outskirts of Bulgaria's capital, Sofia. Home to 35,000 people, the majority Roma. They're celebrating April the 8th, International Roma Day. The day in 1971 when their mother country, India, officially recognized the Roma people, their language and their flag. It's also the day they remember their history, their exodus from India a thousand years ago, their travelling, the million-plus Roma who died in the Nazi concentration camps. Persecution and racism are nothing new for the Roman people. But since 1989, in the transition from communism to capitalism, their living conditions in Central and Eastern Europe have deteriorated dramatically. They live, on average, 15 years less than the rest of the population. In the expanding ghettos on the fringes of cities, many Roma families live in housing with little or no water or electricity. Many children attend segregated, substandard schools, and most of their parents don't have jobs. Those living in rural areas are among the most deprived. The president should come and see how we live. We haven't got enough to eat. We sleep on beds made out of planks, 10, 11 children to a room. We've got a hoeing job here, make just enough for food for the evening. We're a wretched folk, gypsies. Four out of ten Roma in Romania live on less than two dollars a day, according to the World Bank. The country is home to an estimated two million Romani people, almost one in ten of the population. Many are so isolated from the main population, they don't even take basic steps to become citizens. In one neighborhood of the Galat province, most Roma are born, live and die without being registered outside their own community. The task of wading through bureaucracy to get them onto the local authorities' books is Viorica Gotu's full-time job. I think it's very important because if you don't have that identity document, first of all, you can apply for a job, you can enroll in a training course, you can receive child allowance, you have no identity. You don't know who you are. If Viorica hadn't done it, I wouldn't have got the documents. The police refused to issue me any papers. She did it all for me. But do you want a job? Of course, naturally. If someone came to you and said, I either give you a or a job, what would you prefer? I prefer to refuse the aid and take up the job so that I can have a better life with my kids. It's better with a job than waiting around for aid to come once a month. But change is happening. The Roma aren't one single group. They're separated by borders and languages, which has led to decades of disjointed political activism across Europe. 
But now their leaders are starting to bring about change at an international level, this time with a common voice. 2004 was a milestone. The European Roma and Travellers Forum, representing the major Romani organisations, joined the Council of Europe and became directly involved in decisions affecting their communities. What well, is the first time the Roma has been even recognized? And until now we have been treated like a fridge group, like a, like a social phenomenon, a social problem. It was the first time in history that uh, the European government has recognized the Roma as, as a minority that lives, as a transnational minority that lives everywhere in, in the European countries and uh, with, with a common pr uh, problem and that something has to be done to improve the living conditions of this country. In an expanding Europe, Roma are now one of the largest minority groups and the fastest growing. In Hungary, one of the European Union's newest members, Roma make up 6% of the population. The country has produced the first Roma member of the European Parliament, 30-year-old Livia Jaroka. She is one of the new generation of leaders. Now there is a Roma person in the Parliament, so there is of course a great push and also uh, because it's much easier now to locate all the energies of the different so civil rights organizations that are working on Roma issues in Europe into this one building basically into my office we have um, in a way political power Roma have a voice now in the parliament so I rather see this uh, period of Roma history as a, as a, as a, as a time of opportunities in 2003, leaders from eight Central and Eastern European countries, with support from international donors, acknowledged they must recognize Romani people as equal citizens of their countries. They declared a decade of Roma inclusion. But translating promises into practical solutions for ordinary Roma, Roma who have never heard of the decade, needs long-term financial commitments. Veteran activist Nikolai Gheorghe says governments need to change their attitude and realize they are the ones responsible for improving conditions. The Roma are first of all the citizens of the states in which they live, it's obligation of states to deal with that, and uh, uh, outside, the, the support coming from outside is rather to build capacity of the state's institutions. There are a lot of problems. We can't solve them with a magic wand. To find a solution, we need the support of the Romani people. We must try to open up this community and we must work within the Roma society. If partners and organizations cooperate, the results will be better at the national level. But the Roma's problems aren't just national. Stanislav Stankiewicz believes change has to happen not just inside countries, but across borders. Roma and the globalization system. Roma in the globalization process are at the forefront as a European nation because we know how to live within other cultures and among other nations. Why? Because we don't have a problem with religions and cultures. We've learned this, but there is a problem. There is no acceptance of us as Roma as a nation. We don't have a state. We are a transnational nation. We are something new in the globalization process. This novel concept should be accepted by politicians. Roma make up nearly a tenth of the populations of Romania and Bulgaria, and both countries hope to join the European Union in 2007. But becoming a member state means they have to agree to EU regulations guaranteeing equal treatment for all their citizens in education, employment, housing and health. But how much clout does the EU really have? Most policies are still governed by nation states or they cannot be directed by the European Union. What we can do within the EU is coordinate them and present examples of good practice as well as use the anti-discriminatory policies and I will apply them very consistently whenever necessary. 
the monitoring is something that that cannot be done by the national governments and they are they, they don't really let the unfortunately the Roma institutions or the Roma uh, or the Roma uh, civil rights uh, organizations to take responsibility in monitoring. So, uh, as far as I see now, it's definitely the Commission who will have to take on this role. The Roma media play a unique part in this process, representing their community's views, reflecting their culture, and showing the benefits of being part of what they call the Gadje or non-Roma society. In Bulgaria, TV Roma's director Petar Stefanov says the media are the eyes and ears of local Romani communities. We are unemployed and we get 36 lev a month. How can we pay electricity, water? How can we feed and dress our kids so that they can go to school? I would like to ask these gentlemen in the government, how would they do that? As you know, we will be entering Europe. Do you know about this? Are you ready to enter Europe? No, we are not ready to enter Europe. In our settlement, we live in misery. The authorities should understand this is the worst place among Roma here. Integration is a very long process that has to be made on both sides. From one side, the Romanian community, and from the other, the mainstream society. Both sides have to be prepared to work together. My opinion is that there is a barrier that divides both sides. Sites, Bulgarians and Roma living in Bulgaria. This means the majority and the minority. So there is this barrier and we have to build cultural bridges to cross it so that people can understand each other better. Roma TV and radio stations across Eastern Europe are now linking up for the first time, sharing programs and information, bringing more of their communities in touch with decisions affecting them. The broadcasts also give the main populations an understanding of what it's like to be Roma. Better education is at the heart of the decade. Many families can't afford to send their children to school, the uneducated can't find work, and the cycle continues. Across Eastern and Central Europe, less than one in five Roma children continue their education beyond primary school. What I have observed in my daily practice is that this new generation, which is 14, 15 years old, which came after, or which grown, has grown up after the transition in our country, certainly illiterate. Um, and it's pity because these children, uh, not having any um, perspectives for future, Roma children grow up speaking Romani, their mother tongue, and often have a poor command of the national language where they live. This means they are treated as outcasts at national schools, often segregated into Roma-only classes, some placed in schools for learning disabilities, some never venturing from the Romani schools in the settlements. Many children drop out early, disillusioned, disadvantaged. But there is hope for a new generation. In Bukovlak, Bulgaria, where 90% of Roma are unemployed, Sasho Alexandrov is an enrollment coordinator, integrating Roma children into local schools in nearby Pleven. Hunger and unemployment made me concerned that people had to become more motivated in order to find work. That means through education they could find jobs. The older generations are earning their living by scavenging in the junkyards and garbage cans. The younger generation, who are included in the regular schools, will have a completely different understanding and a perception about life. I'm trying to be a friend to my son. He's nine years old. Now he's in the second year of the program. 
за втора година е в фундацията. Никога не съм му помагал. Не, че не съм му помагал. I needed special help at school. I don't want him to need special help as well. Понеже на мен са ми помагали, а не искам да е така. Уйде на коля, малинка, Черинако. But bringing Roma children into mainstream education and helping them feel comfortable requires approaches from many quarters. Miglena Tasova is one of the students from 52 settlements across Bulgaria who attended a six-week course at Veliko Tarnova University to train as a Roma teaching assistant in national schools. I admit that when I first arrived, I thought about going back home. But then when I met the others, we liked each other, and I decided to stay in order to learn something new and to pass on what I've learned to children. My dream is to have a job, to be capable and independent. Back in her hometown, Lom, Miglena is bringing Romani culture and language into the local classroom, as well as helping Roma children get up to speed, making way for better understanding and less discrimination. I like her very much. She teaches us and helps us with anything we find difficult. The teaching assistants are very important in such bilingual environments. In this environment, they are essential for the students to accept the new teaching materials. Obviously, I hope this policy will continue with the communities if we get opportunities from the European partners, especially in the places where we have had less successful results. In the meantime, Roma non-government organizations are replicating the course with universities across the country. But it's not just in schools. Integration needs to happen in the workplace too. Since the collapse of communism, economic hardship in Eastern Europe has affected everyone, and Roma isolation has increased dramatically. Until 1989, we had no economic problems. We, because we had secure jobs, we were working, of course. And that uh, meant a much more full inclusion into the society than in the present time. After 1989, most of the Roma lost their jobs. Today, it's about 11% percent of the Roma male Hungarians who have some sort of job and it's not all, always a legal job. Those Roma with poor education and few skills have been the worst hit. Ten years ago in Romania the two state brick-making factories closed down in Nusvalau and most of the community lost their jobs. But with help from a local organization and the council Roma have started to help themselves. Brickmaking is now providing crucial seasonal work for one in four of the population, and it's enabled them to rebuild their houses. It's the fifth year since I had my first child. I used to take him with me when I was making the bricks for the association. In the first year, I used to put him down on a sheet until I got a pushchair. And then he slept for a week while I was working. Key to the Roma's entrepreneurial success was the support from the wider community. Local businessman Josef Cabe started buying the bricks and hiring Romani workers. I don't discriminate. Everyone gets paid. It's not an issue for me. Everyone who works gets paid. I don't care whether they are Romanians, Hungarians or Roma. Look at them. Everyone gets on with their work. You wouldn't know who's who. Tackling discrimination and building bridges between communities in places like Nusvalau is essential if Roma are to become equal members of European society. At this moment, we can't isolate the problem of Roma discrimination from general discrimination. 
I firmly hope that we will be able to make a sustainable effort to improve the position of Roma in the European Union. But in spite of the progress over the last two years, the first Roma members of the European Parliament, the Forum joining the Council of Europe and the start of the Decade of Roma, there's no room for complacency. Where I see the, you know, the possibility to have an uh, um, added value is to generate interlinks between these initiatives. Uh, the European Roma Forum, the OAC Action Plan on Roma and Sinti, the, the Decade. Now they are quite separate developments. Slowly, I think that we have to bring them together and to identify interlinks and how each can support each other rather than compete with each other. And then to try to, uh, you know, to focus on generating results on the ground. The Roma have a great responsibility in this as well, showing ourselves, showing that we are same as anybody else from the majority society. And that would, this knowing each other, this partnership that we have to build on again together, could only fight the, the, racist, the, the racist and discriminatory fears that people have in, in their soul. Tyto politiky 